Hey folks, today's a quick build. I'm going to show you how to build this CNC enclosure for less than $350 and guess what? It only took two days. Everything that I used to make this enclosure is available from local hardware stores and I'm going to put a link to everything that I used in the description below the video. If you've got a benchtop mill and mess is getting everywhere, this ain't a bad way to keep things clean. Alright, let's go make something. Time to get started. This is the best part of a project when everything smells of sawdust and you're not covered in it yet. So I went to Lowe's and I grabbed that white panel over there, pretty cheap but waterproof, and I brought some 2x4s to set about assembling the frame. We're going to assemble the top of the enclosure first, the bit where the mill goes. I know from the measurements that I made that I need to be 4 foot wide, 2 foot deep and 3 feet high, which makes everything very easy. start assembling this on the bench. You'll see the 2x4s for the sides, but the ones in the middle actually support the mill, so that's where all the weight of the mill is going on. Clamping down the 2x4s makes it much easier to screw them in and also helps you with your accuracy. I use an impact driver, a Makita, to drive the screws in. It's not often that I advocate for any particular tools, but I will tell you that I didn't even go through one battery on my impact and one on my drill throughout this whole project. It's important to get this thing square, so if you've got a large square to check the edges just as you put it together, it's going to help you in the future. Now I need to start chopping up this white plastic sheet. This is great, it's actually fiberglass, so it hardly compresses. In fact, once the guys over at Ohio Diesel told me that you can actually use this underneath your fixtures and things inside of your milling machine because it works really well. If you just overshoot slightly, you're only going to hit the fiberglass rather than crashing your mill. I'm screwing this down now just temporarily so I can get a feel for the fit of this thing. So it's waterproof, it, flex, it flexes pretty well, and it's cheap. It was, what, 36 bucks for the whole 8 foot by 4 foot sheet. So screw the edges down with roofing screws. I use a lot of them. This does tend to flex. One recommendation I give you is start from the middle and work your way out. It stops it bulging in the middle, pushes the bulges towards the edge. I used plenty of screws because I wanted it to look nice and neat. In the very middle is where our drain plug is going to be, so you can see I've used those 2x4s temporarily so I can get the whole layout put down. But I'm going to take them off now. Um, we're going to have to space them up so that the run off of all the coolant or the water or whatever it is is going to be able to drain towards the middle. That's why we have that curve there. So these four 2x4 blocks are just going to space up those two longer 2x4s. So now I have a place for the coolant to drip through or run through towards the middle few more screws, so I use 3 inch screws for this, I screw them as squarely as I could, use clamps to try and keep things in place while I assemble this. You don't need to get these perfect just yet because you will need to take them off one last time so that you can seal around the entire enclosure. So now I'm building the back. It was important to me to have a strong back on this enclosure because I'm pretty much going to hang most things off of it. So I put two 2x4s two there, you can see they're 3 foot high. I used a square to make sure that it was as square as possible. From those 2x4s I'm going to hang a three foot high by four foot wide piece of that same eight foot by four foot white plastic sheet so that's going to form the back so I'm screwing this in in a second into those two by fours so that it's uh, vertical. I didn't find that the white fiberglass sheet split at all like acrylic would so you can just drill straight into it with those roofing screws there's no trouble at all. Now you can't quite see this but I'm taking some 2x2s two and I'm just shoring up the frame. I've got some 2x2s two along the edge there. Since I have all the strength at the back I'm going to use quite a few 2x2s two just to frame this up. let lets me cheaply define the rest of the shape of the enclosure. I wanted the enclosure to slope from front to back towards the top so that I get better uh, runoff or run down of the coolant or whatever liquids end up on the side of the frame. So you can see there'll be a taper now from the bottom all the way to the top of those um, those three feet high two by twos that I've got in the middle there. I did actually measure the mill to make sure that once I do that it's going to work out and there's going to be a little bit of a lip probably about 12 inches high from the bottom as well just to make sure that we've got clearance for all the mechanical parts on the mill. So we had a quick cross piece we used clamps to make sure that we can secure it and then I cut another four foot wide by about a foot deep piece of that same white plastic and screwed it in Always be careful working with ladders. I put another four foot wide piece of 2x2 two two at the back so that squares off the very top of the frame. And now you can see me throwing a few more roofing screws in to make sure that white plastic stays exactly where it's supposed to, working from the middle towards the outside and that got rid of all the bulges. I used a two inch hole saw to cut some holes in the white plastic. It went through very easily. I've got one hole there for the wires for the mill and there's going to be another one at the top for the shop light. It only took a minute to measure up for the shop light. 
dropped some screws through there and hung the light and it made the world of difference. 16 bucks for three foot light and it lit up the enclosure beautifully. I'm sure this feels a little backwards but I'm starting the base now. So I've got some 4x4 four four, 6 foot length pieces of lumber that I've chopped in half. I use treated lumber just because I like the weight and the dimensionality. I also cut some 2x4s into 4 foot wide for the sides, for the, for the front and back actually and then 2 foot pieces for the left and right. I then went round and mitered all the corners so that it all fit together well. See me screwing these in now, so I'm using a combination of 2 inch and 3 inch screws, taking care to wear safety goggles with the mitre saw. I have a corner clamp and actually found that to be very useful when I was framing these up. Obviously do what works best for you. Building the base took no time at all, so the only thing to do is put it right side up and do a superman, make sure it can hold some weight. All this assembled lumber can actually be quite heavy, so I wouldn't recommend doing this next step on your own. I'm lucky because I had a telescopic workbench that I assembled the top half of the enclosure on. So I just adjusted the height up to the perfect level and nudged it little by little, left and right, take extreme care. I would absolutely not recommend having the mill on there when you do this step. I did it for sizing and had to remove it after. Let's drop a 2 inch hole in for the drain. This was just a dry fit, you actually need to put silicon sealant all the way around this waste because otherwise you're going to get leaks. The more time you put in now, sealing the enclosure, the easier things are going to be. So while you've got that sealant in your hand, make sure you tackle everything you possibly can. Right, let's get the front on. There's another piece of that exact same white sheet just cut off from earlier. It's one of the last pieces remaining. You see me framing it up with some 2x2. Two two. Next is the 2x2s two for the taper at the top. I took some time to mark these up and cut the angles correctly to make everything look right. Next up, sealant. As I said, be very careful with sealant. You need to actually remove those middle pieces. This is something I didn't realize when I was doing that. You must remove those or you're going to get leaks. So take a lot of care to make sure that everything's sealed really well. I've cheated a bit here because it took me some extra time to make this waterproof. I actually put sealant under the 2x4s and along the back behind those 2x4s and I even flex sealed them for good measure. But it worked. Everything was waterproof. You can see it's holding water. Just pull the drain plug, you can hear how much water comes out. So oh yeah. That's going to work just fine. The next part is the bit I enjoyed the least. I wanted to fit some acrylic to the sides as windows, so I marked it all out, but cutting acrylic is actually really difficult. Uh, you know you're supposed to score it with a knife and then bend it to break it, but when I did that, I don't know whether I scored it wrong, didn't have a sharp enough knife, but it broke unevenly and it had some cracks, so I wasn't super happy with the way it came out. You can't really see it in the finished article, so I sort of got away with it. A tip I'd give you is to pre-drill the acrylic. You don't want a screw to crack the acrylic, so pre-drill that and then drill into the wood. Once you get the sides on, guess what? More sealant. The right hand side is just the opposite of the left hand side. And with that done, it's starting to look like an enclosure. I used a spare piece of T-slot as the door slider, but I did put in the bill of materials just a U-channel from Lowe's or Home Depot. That would work just as well. For the doors I cut a 4 foot piece of acrylic into 4 1 foot pieces so there was just not enough to cover left to right so I added an extra 2x2 two two. that reduced the opening enough for the doors to overlap. I had some spare aluminum aluminium L channel that I used to support the doors on the left and right but you could use screws or anything really, you could even use sealant. You'll notice that I didn't cut down the Lexan sheet and that's because I thought if I have to make this enclosure larger then I would rather not have to buy another sheet. Those Lexan panels are quite expensive. That one was $79.98, so it was the most expensive thing that I bought for this whole enclosure. This was one of the most satisfying moments, taking the backing off the Lexan sheet and turning it into clear plexiglass. I always love that feeling. Put some handles on as a finishing touch. I had to cut down the screws though because they were just slightly too long. And with that, we're done. Two days, 350 bucks later, we've got a beautiful enclosure. <laughs> So overall I'm really happy with this enclosure, it's going to keep coolant all contained, it also does a really good job of keeping things quiet, if you open the door you'll hear the noise, it's much louder with the door open. So thanks for keeping me company during this build and we'll see you next time.